Hello everyone, my name is Lukasz, I'm a software engineer working for Codilime. And my name is Michał, I work as network and DevOps engineer at Codilime. Welcome to our webinar called Promises of Sonic. By Sonic we mean an open source network operating system and unfortunately we will not be playing any of the popular Sonic games for Nintendo consoles. We wanted to share the experience we gathered while building a custom network fun functionality for the Sonic system. What will this webinar look like? So first we will give a brief overview of the concept of open networking. Then we will introduce you to Sonic, what it is and how it looks on the inside. Then we will jump to the problem we decided to solve as Codilime to get our own hands-on experience with Sonic system to get a deep dive into it. Then we will present our results and after the summary and takeaways, we will, uh, we will answer some of your questions in the Q&A session. So I encourage you to write down your questions in the chat during the presentation. Let's start with the broader uh, concept, namely open networking. The main principle behind this, it is the so-called uh, hardware and software di disaggregation, meaning that we can have uh, standard hardware and possibility to install on it a network operating system of our choice. This may bring a number of benefits like cost reduction, uh, avoiding uh, vendor lock-in because we can have uh, hardware uh, independent of the network operating system running on it, community-driven innovation and uh, potential for customization. For example, if our organization have, uh, sp has specific needs uh, which requires uh, features not yet available, we can develop them by ourselves or in case of uh, open source uh, network operating system, work with the community to add them and develop and add them. Uh, today, uh, there are a number of uh, network operating systems on the mar market, both open source and uh, commercial ones. Just to name a few of them, we put a list on the right and uh, Sonic is one of them. Okay, so we at Codiline have noticed that from among the impressive number of network operating systems dedicated to uh, networking equipment, a particular, particular one stands out and is uh, predicted to have a significant market growth in the upcoming years. And that is Sonic, Sonic which stands for sof Software for Open Networking in the Cloud. So Sonic is like most uh, open, most network operating system, a Linux-based operating system. It was first developed by Microsoft for its Azure data center switches in mind. Then it was open sourced in 2016, first under the Open Compute Project Foundation. Then this year it was moved to the Linux Foundation. It has a large ecosystem and development community, including global software and hardware giants, uh, it has a, uh, a release cycle of roughly six months and all of that is basically hard to ignore so we've decided to, uh, to take a look at it ourselves and learn that. So we started a project dedicated uh, to Sonic and defined a sample but useful uh, scenario which required features not yet available uh, in the Sonic. Our goal was to uh, check how much uh, time and efforts is needed and if it is at all feasible to realize our use case in Sonic. There are other possibilities uh, which could uh, fulfill our needs, but our goal was to employ and test Sonic specifically. Okay. Let's say a few words about the Sonic architecture. I'll give just a high level design overview of it, uh, of what is important from our project's perspective. And generally speaking, Sonic systems architecture uh, consists of various modules hosted as Docker, con Docker containers that interact among each other through a centralized Redis database. So the network applications at the top 
those serve as higher level controls and input for the sonic system. The group we've called switch state applications on the left, it's responsible for maintaining the consistency between the database and the actual sonic system state and also sets the desired data plane configuration in the database. The group on the right, the, the module on the right called the synchronization daemon, that reads the desired data plane configuration from the database and it controls the switch data plane, the switch ASIC, the hardware part, through the use of SAI API. SAI is a fundamental part element of the sonic system so what is it then? Well, SAI stands for Switch Abstraction Interface. It is a generalized abstraction over the underlying ASIC serving data plane, so over the underlying vendor-specific hardware. It's not developed as a part of Sonic, but it's used by Sonic. So it's a separate open source project governed by the Open Compute Project Foundation. And I'd like to emphasize what's really important about SAI which is that uh, SAI is just an API with a set of rules on how to call it and what it means. And it's up to the hardware vendors to implement that API. So simply speaking, uh, code, control plane code written for a single common SAI definition can work with multiple different vendor implementations, so different vendor hardwares. And that's a key Sonic feature. Okay, now let's talk about our use case. We have uh, decided to design and build a simple load uh, balancing uh, functionality, which would allow us to distribute uh, packets based on OCI layer for payload. For example, on arbitrary fields from UDP uh, payload. One may ask why such feature? Well, there are a number of use cases which may benefit from it. For example, uh, load balancing uh, based on application layer data to containerized endpoint. Today, such functionality uh, typically is realized by software components running on uh, servers. Moving into highly performant uh, network switch would allow us uh, to increase network efficiency uh, by reducing uh, potential packet losses, latency, or congestion. Also, we could save uh, compute uh, resources, uh, uh, processor resources, which could be used for other uh, tasks. Another example is uh, 5G traffic, which has uh, high requirements in terms of uh, network uh, bandwidth and latency. And again, uh, using a network device uh, would allow us to uh, achieve much better performance. We have decided to use a GTPU protocol uh, as an example traffic and uh, the load balancing to be based on TID field from a GTP header. A GTPU protocol is uh, one of the uh, fundamental uh, protocols uh, from uh, mobile networks and as such is commonly used in telecommunication uh, area. Uh, in our particular uh, use case, a uh, TID field from a GTP uh, header is used to, uh, as a base for load balancing, but this could be easily generalized by different, with different configuration we could uh, use, uh, we could support different protocol or use different part uh, of the uh, packet to make the load balancing uh, decision. Okay, having the use case defined, we have to check what uh, approaches are, as, uh, are available in SAI. As uh, Wukash explained, SAI is a critical and fundamental part, meaning that it, uh, whatever uh, we use must be supported there. Look it, looking at the uh, SAI specification, we found out a uh, user-defined field, in short, UDF. UDF is a method allowing to define uh, fields uh, in, a, uh, in a packet which uh, are uh, extracted. Uh, like that, uh, user have control which uh, packets because UDF allows to, um, to choose arbitrary fields. Uh, so user have uh, control which one to use and is no longer limited to the well-known predefined 
uh, fields from uh, specific protocols, for example, uh, IP addresses. Uh, UDF can be used in context of hashes, where its role is to extract uh, values which are later used to calculate uh, hashes for link aggregation or equal cost uh, multipath. In fact, uh, at first glance, ECMP uh, looks like a good solution for our use case. However, we have another requirement, uh, predictability in terms of endpoint selection. And uh, hash calculation contains some parameters which are chosen by vendors implementing SAI. And because of that reason, it was not the best uh, approach uh, for us. That left us with the other option, the second option, uh, namely UDF-based uh, ACLs. Uh, in this case, uh, UDF uh, work, uh, works as a qualifier in access control uh, list. And uh, that was uh, our choice, the, the, our approach. So now let's talk shortly about how uh, access control list works in Sonic. ACLs consist of two parts, match rules and action. Match rules defined uh, which fields uh, to extract from a packet and compare their values with uh, the values specified uh, by the user. Like that, we can uh, make the filtering decision and selling only a subset of packets, ones which are interested uh, for us. However, the uh, match rules uh, available in Sonic only uh, can take into account uh, fields from uh, layer 2 to layer 4 and not, not other parts uh, of, the pa of the packet. Action uh, defines what to do with the filters with the, or with the selected uh, packets. And action are rather standard, so for example, we can forward with this standard uh, processing, drop, mirror or redirect, meaning that we can specify next hop or choose the outbound uh, port on the switch. So why uh, one need uh, UDF? UDF extends uh, filtering capabilities of uh, access control list, allowing to choose arbitrary field from any part uh, of the packet. In our case, it is the ID field from a GTP uh, protocol header. However, it could be anything else, so any part of the packet could be selected. Like that, we can gain much uh, better flexibility and also, to, for example, to, um, uh, to make to provide support for new protocols which are not, not yet built in or recognized by Sonic itself. So having finished the analysis phase, having specified the required, the, having proposed the solution for it, we could jump to the solution implementation. As Michał said, our use case could be achieved by properly configuring access control lists. Access control list consists of rules to match a packet and actions to be performed in case of a match. So coming back to Sonic, to our use case, the rule was to match the TID field of the GTPU packet header using user-defined fields. The action was simply to redirect to a proper endpoint in case of a match. What was missing in Sonic when we started was matching packets with UDFs, and that's the logic that we needed to add on our own. So putting things into perspective, uh, you might recall the architecture graph I've shown earlier, and we needed to update two services. One of the switch state applications called orchestration agent, aka org agent, which is responsible for setting the SAI con desired configuration according to the user-defined uh, configuration. In our case, that was the uh, defined configuration for access control lists. The second module we needed to update was the synchronization daemon. It's responsible for pushing the uh, ASIC configuration to ASIC to the hardware layer with the use of SAI API. What is important to emphasize here is that we have not added any changes to SAI. We've just used the existing SAI capabilities 
to extend Sonic functionality or to add a new functionality to, to Sonic. And then uh, we decided to verify our implementation. However, initially, we have used Sonic Virtual Switch, which is kind of emulator, emulating a physical switch with a Sonic network operating system in the form of virtual machine or container. And we used the Sonic Virtual Switch as a base for our development and testing. However, uh, it uh, had some consequences for us. Uh, firstly, we assumed universal sign implementations uh, specifically the one which is available in Sonic Virtual Switch and not any specific for vendor or available in any specific switch. The second was the fact that uh, ACL's configuration in Sonic Virtual Switch is not propagated into data plane. It is possible to verify uh, ACL configuration in Sonic uh, internal databases, but it is not possible to check with the traffic going through uh, Sonic. This uh, led us to the decision to employ a physical switch and we had to choose one which will be used for our tests. At that stage we faced another challenge and this challenge was to uh, confirm the SAI version which is supported by different uh, ASIC vendors. It turned out that uh, not uh, often vendors do not publish the SI implementation or only they share uh, details with their partners. Uh, another point was the fact that sometimes even if vendor uh, supports particular release, there are some features which are only uh, supported in limited, uh, in limited uh, parts, meaning that are uh, implemented partially. And it was very important for us uh, because uh, we, for our use case and for our implementation, uh, we needed uh, UDF-based ACLs, which were added in a rather re uh, in a recent uh, version of uh, SAI. After the research, we have decided uh, to use uh, Melanox, now NVIDIA uh, switch. And uh, the main reasons uh, behind the decision was the fact that uh, Melanox publishes the SARI, uh, SARI implementation uh, in their GitHub repository, and also they implement uh, quite recent SARI version. Having the physical switch with Sonic, we were able to build our uh, lab uh, setup. So Sonic, was, uh, cent so Sonic switch was central part of it, and uh, it connected uh, traffic uh, generator to two uh, endpoints. The role of Sonic was to forward uh, GTPU uh, traffic, GTPU packets, based to the configuration we applied uh, on it. And uh, because we had only two endpoints, so the configuration was rather simple, and the rule was that if the TID field of GTPU uh, header, the last bit of it, was equal to zero, we forwarded the packet to the first endpoint, and if the last bit was equal to one, we forwarded it to the second endpoint. Okay, now we'll uh, present a short demonstration. In fact, uh, this is the recorded version uh, of, uh, of the demo, as, and uh, it, uh, it works as it was presented on the previous uh, picture. So on the top left, we have the endpoint uh, one, on the top right, there is endpoint two, and at the bottom, we have a traffic uh, generator. Uh, all of them uh, are connected uh, to our uh, Sonic switch, but right now we are showing on the server, which is connected with free links to that, uh, to that switch. And uh, those elements, those components are separated because we are using uh, Linux network uh, namespaces. And uh, right now we have started uh, listeners in the endpoint, in the first endpoint, uh, and then other listener in the second endpoint. And now uh, we are starting our generator. For the uh, traffic generation, we are using uh, Python sc uh, uh, library. And uh, right now we are defining the packets which will be sent. So you can see that the packets are in fact, it is this one, 
definition. The only thing which is changing is TID, in which in, uh, res will result in having ten uh, array of ten uh, packets with TID starting from zero to nine. And when it is ready, uh, we will send our uh, packets. They will go through Sonic switch, which will distribute them. And we see that we received uh, packets on both endpoints, uh, even though the IP address, the destination IP address is exactly the same, packets were forwarded to different endpoints based on uh, TID. So on the left, for, of left side, on the first endpoint, we see that TID is uh, even, and on the right side, it is odd. So we uh, achieved what we, what we wanted. Sorry. Okay, coming to an end, let's recap and summarize what we have achieved. So the primary reason for us to take up this project was to take a deep dive into Sonic development, to see how difficult it is, to solve the unpredictable problems, to get our herds dirty, our own hands-on experience. What we have done was first we have defined a practical use case such that one that might become a functional product in the context of uh, mobile networks. We went through the analysis phase. We've analyzed the existing Sonic and SAI documentation and specified a feasible solution for that problem. Then we have implemented what was missing for that solution. That was user-defined field support for ACLs. Finally, we've acquired a compatible Mellanox switch. We've built a lab, we've conducted tests, and as you could see on the demo, the tests were successful. We've drawn a fair number of conclusions also on the lower level. That is tips and recommendations particularly useful for other Sony developers and network architects. So in case uh, if you fit that profile, we'd like to invite you to a series of blog posts that we've written uh, where we share some lessons learned more in depth. Uh, in, so stay tuned, follow us on your favorite social media. Uh, the blog post will be released in the next few weeks from today. So for the key takeaways, feature development open source control plane features development in Sonic is possible thanks to its modular architecture, but it must be backed in the data plane, in the Sonic capabilities, of course. So a conscious choice of the hardware platform is essential if you plan to work with a part of SAI API that has not been used by Sonic yet, if it's something new to Sonic. In our experience, uh, we've had both documented and undocumented discrepancies between the SAI API and the actual SAI implementation that was provided by the vendor. Uh, it's made us uh, create some workarounds uh, and uh, not use some parts of the SAI API that were supposed to work in theory but did not work in practice. Our use case was a sample one uh, because our main goal was to check the development process uh, for Sonic. We see that there are a number of follow-up steps which could be done. For example, the performance test to check if our implement with our implementation we can achieve, achieve uh, acceptable uh, performance. Uh, and those steps should be done if we would like to make this, uh, this implementation and production ready. Uh, now we uh, get to the last uh, part of our uh, presentation. So if you have any questions, uh, please uh, pose them uh, in the chat. Okay, we have uh, the first uh, question. And the question is, why didn't you extend SAI with required logic? Mm. Okay, uh, maybe. Yeah, I, I can take that. Uh, the very reason of using Sonic is the fact that it's generic, so it's vendor agnostic. If we were to uh, edit SAI 
change the size specification, thus um, modify some tender implementation for that. In our case, that would be Melanox, which is open source. Uh, we would basically not achieve our goal, which is uh, creating a um, general uh, vendor agnostic Sonic uh, solution. So um, that's why we had to, we wanted to use the existing SAI capabilities. And it's also uh, generally adding anything to SAI requires a community wide uh, process, the review process, and it uh, should be, well, it must be backed by the actual will of the vendors to implement the given part of SAI API. So uh, that wasn't simply the scope of, of the project, I could say. Okay. Uh, we'll have the question is how much time did you spend on this project? Okay, so we can say that uh, it was more or less uh, three months, mm -hmm. starting from the very, very beginning with the very early research. Uh, but uh, the time we spent on the implementation and verification was around uh, two months. Yeah, because we had to take uh, into account the, the analysis, the, the implementation, the uh, integration, and also the, the preparations for for the webinar, for the blog posts and editing and all of that. So it, yeah, roughly three months, you could say. Okay, we have another question. Uh, you have mentioned Young as a future use case. Can you elaborate uh, on that? Yes, uh, Young uh, schemas are used to, to model uh, the features which are available in Sonic. So for example, the mm, command line uh, is uh, built from uh, young uh, models. And uh, in our work, uh, because uh, we had limited time and uh, very limited scope, we have not uh, built from the feature we added, we have not built a model for it. For it. I mean, the UDF-based ACLs uh, in Sonic, we don't have a young model for it. So we see that uh, if we want to make it a production ready, we should develop that. Okay, so I think we could wrap it up. Yes, so uh, at the end we have one small announcement. After this webinar you will uh, receive a very short survey about your impressions. And it is very important for us to get your feedback so we could constantly improve our uh, webinars. So thank you in advance for sharing it. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank Bye. you very much for being with us. Thanks. Bye.